how did you get into real estate? So I know I have a big advantage over everybody. You know, everyone listening is in real estate. They're smart Israelis all over the world. Uh, you know, you got you got a great group. Um, I had no interest in real estate. Zero. I was um, going nowhere. I was back in Nashville. I uh, was supposedly selling insurance, and I never sold any. <laughs> and I was working in restaurants, and um, I, the insurance company only worked with wealthy people. They recommended me this guy, supposed to be very rich, you know, to buy all this insurance. And I went out there to meet him. Very simple man, good man. Uh, he looked broke. I was brought up, uh, like many people, you know, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer. We, were, My immediate family was not rich. Some of my relatives were, but not us. Uh, number two, you got to be really smart to be rich. Go get a degree of tech and on, CEO, lawyer, doctor. Um, I did eventually go to law school, but that wasn't working at that time. And uh, anyway, I met this guy, very simple. He had 121 houses paid for. That was just his rental portfolio. He was buying and fixing and selling and paid for, making millions. Wow. And I look at this guy, simple, no background, no real education. He never graduated high school like me. And I said, if this guy can do it, maybe I can. So he showed me what to do. This is so basic, I even I'm a little embarrassed saying it, but from your story, the one thing I like, which a lot of people don't understand, is you worked. You went, look, you're handing out flyers. You're talking to 40 people. Most people won't do that. And you have to work. It's you know, kind of really funny. Like, every, like a lot of the time, you know, on the way to Batyam, you, you go through the Tel Aviv uh, boardwalk. And yeah. I had a friend that he lived right on the boardwalk. So sometime on the way back, uh, midnight, 1 a.m., after seeing four or five uh, properties a day, getting them into the Excel. I went over to his, his apartment. We're looking over the ocean. Then he told me, Lior, are you crazy? What are you doing? Like you, you've been walking all day till 7, 8 p.m. And then you go and you see this apartment and stuff. And, and what's going on with you? When there's a crash. It's only in a few markets. It's not the whole country. You know, Nashville never really went down. Um, you know, Memphis didn't go down. But anyway, people think in Israel, they think the whole market's like crashing. There, there's 30 markets in New York, different. They move different. But anyway, here's the point to the return. What you're saying now, it's very important for the listeners to understand. Sometimes, you know, I get questioned all the time. Is it a good time to get into real estate now? The market being like 12 years or whatever. They need to understand that there are so many different market, every state, every market, and then every city, every, uh, of course that there is a major cycle for the economy and things like that. But, but, but let's say Amazon got into DC now, even if it's going to go down, Amazon going to bring it up. So, so it's going to well, balance. Well, part of DC, I, I do deals in Frederick, Hagerstown, Washington, DC, Virginia, that where Amazon goes up, by the way, national, uh, uh, Oracle just announced they're buying, uh, putting five, 10,000 jobs in this thing. This neighborhood went, shoo, but the two mile, two, uh, three kilometers, two miles away, nothing happened. Miami, the beach didn't go down. Midtown crashed, and it's two kilometers, three miles. Yeah. So every morning, has, it's like saying, I'd like to meet a girl. How are the girls in the world? So, so how do you connect to spirituality? Well, if you ask me a question, I'll give you an answer. It's, uh, I love talking about this. We usually don't. You know, I'm Jewish and I uh, went to Hebrew school, got bar mitzvah, and I come from 5,000 years of rabbis. And like most nice Jewish people in America, at a certain age, I'm like, well, this is boring. I don't like it. <laughs> you know, um, and I kind of left and went everywhere, studied Taoism, uh, 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 Reiki, I looked everywhere. And then I've come back to Judaism. I think it's all there, uh, you know, in the Torah, the Talmud, and the, the, the great heritage we have, if you look for it in the right places. So I, I really, uh, study a lot, pray a lot, and uh, I'm still open. But um, you know, I think we, you know, we have a very nice tradition. It's all there if you look for it. Actually, I wanted to ask you, like, what kind of of people did you meet that most influenced you? Like, I'm sure you saw success stories from from students, or you met like uh, interesting oh, people through your deals. Like, people go why your life with why them. Do, why do you do Project X? And I and I tell people um, about inspiring. And I'm going to tell you something. We have a student named Tina. She can't speak her here. And I thought, you know, I've been to Tony Robbins. I'm a motivational speaker. I, I love that stuff. And some of our students, not just Tina, they inspire me more than any course, whatever. When yeah. you teach, you learn. I know you've taught. I mean, you're doing it now. And when you teach, you have to stay on top of the things. If not, they'll, you can't teach. Yeah. But number two, 
you think you know a lot and then someone will say something or do something that completely change the way you think these days you see like israel is more and more in a high tech and and you know actually doing the switch like you did you know like being from a basic i i, I wouldn't say poor but you know like a basic family yeah. into being a millionaire so it is uh, telling people it is possible it, it, yeah. uh, Project. And you're all brought up to work 60 hours a week for somebody else and you can make some money yeah. or you could work for yourself. There's challenges. You, you have to stick with it. And all of a sudden you're freer. You're never hundred percent free. You always have to work, but you're freer. You're in control. And to me, that's worth, you know, to me, I'm in a suit today because I have big meetings, but uh, I wear what I want to wear. I go where I want to go from real estate. To me, that's worth a, a half a million dollars a year. I work with who I want to work with. Yeah. That to me is worth, you know, you all, we've all worked people we didn't want to work with, had a weird boss. Uh, to me, that's worth a half a million dollars. And there's other ways to besides real estate, but I like real estate. But anyway, uh, they were worth 30 fixed up, uh, bought them for 18, and they needed 18. I'm going to be upside down. Uh, there were 25, 30,000, hard to rent there, bad area. And I literally, I'm upside down. I'm, I'm not going to be able to make money. I can't, if I fix them, I'm upside down. And I really thought I was going to, you know, lose. I bought a, a, a five duplexes. So I'm upside down. A, I was like 20, 30,000 upside down. I was going to lose like $150,000. And I cried. Yeah. And then I did the hardest thing to do, ask for help. I went to my mentor and I'll never forget what he said. He said, Bobby, are you sure messed up? <laughs> he goes, you got a problem. You didn't run the numbers. You didn't double check. You didn't, you know, run the comps. You didn't check the repairs. The repairs were more. But he said, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna suffer. You're gonna buy them, you bought them already. You're gonna fix them and you're gonna rent them and you're not gonna make any money for a year or two. You're gonna hate it. But he goes, real time will fix any mistake you make in real estate. I wanna be very clear about this. This week, I had two deals fall through. So you have to look at a lot of deals, talk to a lot of people to get lucky. I tell them it's like dating, uh, you know, a shit or whatever, you don't just, you know, go on one date, maybe, uh, you know, and everything's perfect, correct? It's a numbers game. Yeah. And that said, I don't the numbers of offers, and, and most people will not do it, correct? And Definitely. that's the problem. Like, uh, a lot of people cannot handle uh, failure, like that they go through uh, one failure, a second failure. You, you see, for example, uh, I just saw that there was a, a, the commentary about WeWork. Um, so he came to the U.S., with the big dream, and then he, he, he says he failed first, he failed second, he felt, you know, it, it was failing so many times, and eventually he had the huge uh, success. So he failed again with his public offering, but it's an okay failure. <laughs> so this is crazy. People will not understand it. By the way, when I saw it the first time, I didn't understand it. So if you don't, uh, I'm at a seminar, people know me and you know, trust me a little bit, and I say, I have a $100 bill, and there's two rules. We're doing auction. And the first rule is if you're at the, at the end of uh, five minutes, if you're the highest bid, you win. Yeah. If you're the second highest bid, yeah. so let's say you bid 80 and uh, Arit bid 70. Okay. You would win. You pay 80, get the $100 bill. And Arit is the second bid. She loses but has to pay the 70. Yeah. So you don't want to be the second. Got it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I tell people, you know, get out of your comfort zone, a bid. And I thought I'd make $90 or $92 auctioning a hundred dollar bill that makes jewish logical sense correct so, but people are not logical think of what people pay for a banana taped to a piece of paper or wait in line to go to a club or whatever so what it shows is peter's motivation the i once got thirty thousand dollars really and i tell you, you have to pay it's not a joke and somebody paid thirty thousand dollars for a hundred dollar bill 